My name is Julie Super. I'm a volunteer with the Audubon Natural Society, and I'm here to talk to you today about um, this young imprinted black vulture, Gillis, and about black vultures in general, also about their cousins, the turkey vultures. Um, so as you see, she's a black bird, she's got a black head. If she was a turkey vulture, she would have a red head at least when she was older. When turkey vultures are young, their heads are black, um, but then they turn red as they get sexually mature. Um, the, of the two, Gillis and the, or the black vultures are a heavier bird, but a smaller bird. So if you see them together, to, uh, young black vultures together, the larger of the vulture with the black head will be a turkey vulture if they're both young. Other difference in these birds is um, when they're flying. It's um, sometimes hard to, to see that red head on a turkey vulture when they're way up in the sky. Uh, as I said, turkey vultures are a slightly bigger bird, but slightly lighter. They will hold their wings in a dihedral or a V. And because their body's a little bit lighter, they will also do a lot of tipping, a lot of tottering back and forth, trying to get um, balance in the, in the air currents. Black vultures will, will fly with a very in a nice straight plane, <clears throat> and they just generally have a broader, thicker look about them. Their wings are broader, their tail is wedge-shaped, where a turkey vulture's tail is a little bit long and a little more elegant. Um, the other thing about the wings is that a turkey vulture will have a, a lighter pigment all along the trailing end of their wings. We call it the turkey vulture silver lining. Uh, a black vulture will just have that lighter pigment on the tips of her fingers. So we'll, we say that they have jazz hands. So the silver lining is for the turkey vulture, jazz hands for the black vulture. The other main difference between the two birds is the way they find their food. These are scavengers. They're eating dead meat. Um, and turkey vultures find their food not so much by sight, but by um, sense of smell. They're one of the few birds in the animal kingdom that has a sense of smell. A black vulture has somewhat of a sense of smell, but they really rely primarily on their sight or on turkey vultures. Often you'll see a group of black vultures flying above turkey vultures. When the turkey vultures come down, the black vultures follow them. So this eating of dead meat is actually the environmental service they provide to all of us and to the ecosystem. Um, if meat just laid there, the bacterial load would get very high. These birds are very quick at uh, cleaning a carcass and then their, their incredible micro gut flora um, actually neutralizes a lot of bad bacteria that can cause some pretty serious diseases like, uh, like uh, botulism, um, anthrax, rabies. Um, so it's, it's pretty incredible what they do for us. Because they do that for us, we should do something in return for them. And one of the ways we can keep these guys healthy is by not introducing things that they cannot tolerate eating. So if a carcass has lead shot in it, the, the lead will affect them. If the carcass has any rodenticide or other insecticide like that, that will adversely affect these birds. Um, so we wanna make sure that we don't, we don't use those kind of things. Um, the other thing we can do for them is they're a big body bird and so they're slow to take off. They're going to be primarily eating carrion on the road or on the roadside. So when you come across a group having a, a meal, slow down, give them time to take off. They're not songbirds, it takes them a little while. And lastly, what I, what I ask for us to do for all wildlife is just to give them space. Um, let's make sure they have enough habitat and the things they need in order to do the good jobs that they do for us. Um, just advocate for some open space. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Say goodbye, Gillis. <laughs>